Hey, Richard, how are you? Aloha, my friend. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you very much for having me as a guest. You bet. Hey, thank you for dressing for the occasion. Now I feel like I'm like two casual men. Just in case our moms show up, I got to be at the ready, so I'm invited back. <laughs> so oh, does, does your mom just show up? <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you, but I'm always, I'm always dressed at the ready. Like when I travel, you know, I'm on airplanes. I like to dress up as well because you never know who you meet. And if it's your last day on earth, I want to look good. Oh and yeah, right, right. You want to make sure you make sure you're wearing underwear just in case. You never know. So, Richard, you have a wealth of experience and background in telemarketing and yeah. uh, international business, and that really struck me when I saw you recently on another podcast. And I thought maybe we should talk a little bit about that. I definitely think we should. Plus, you have a fun podcast. I know you're going to ask some very interesting questions. Yeah, I'm a little bit off the wall sometimes, but I try to keep it somewhat sensible and within bounds. Of course, of course. Have you heard this show before? Absolutely. In fact, I like the mixture that you do in regards to food, life, and business. So, I mean, that's just a nice, perfect taste, you know, for your afternoons. Well, let's first let everyone know what part of the world you're in right now. I'm currently in Central America, Costa Rica, uh -huh. north of Panama, south of Nicaragua. Okay. Witness protection, maybe? No, just a long shot dreamer from Northeast Philly that got past parents' guilt and went out of one in a million shot. 24 years ago, I took it, married the girl of my dreams, started a business. And as I'm saying, I'm just very happy and humble. The fact that not only on your podcast, but I got a half decent story to tell. Tell me about the girl of your dreams first. You now, being from Northeast Philly, you always think of Gilligan's Island. And so when I got off the plane here in August of 2000, the women in Costa Rica are absolutely beautiful. They're Central American, exotic, tropical. They have a nice right. flair and Pura Vida in their heart. And in the first couple months, I met my current wife, Grace Bourbon. She was working at my friend's restaurant. And so I was playing it smooth. Matthew, I'd call up and I'd order a double cheeseburger. And then I'd say, hey, send Gracie. <laughs> Let me go see her. So she would show up. And I would write her some poems in Spanish and draw cartoons. And I tried to court her the old school way compared to the 99 other guys trying to ask her out for drinks. And little did I know that this very old school, old fashioned conservative young lady would find me interesting. And we've been together forever and we started a business together. And so um, I was very fortunate to combine two different worlds where everything is fresh and new She's my Spanish tutor. I'm her English tutor. <laughs> you know, that's kind of fun. But um, when you meet somebody and marry somebody that is completely not saying the opposite, but the way they were raised in certain traditions and cultures, it's true love. It's not like you're hanging out with the people you grew up with or you go to church with or your families know everybody. You found this person in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> yonder. And you guys right, found exactly. something in common that has such a strong foundation, it's still lasting to this day. And so um, I believe in things that need to be done organically and naturally. And plus, between me and you, I definitely was looking for a wife when I came to Costa Rica. Okay, so you, you were uh, in the hunt, so to speak, when you got there. I was 27 and still had hair. I could get dates, uh -huh. but um, there was something different about this, my friend. Because compared to growing up playing ice hockey and Pac-Man and knowing what Humphrey Bogart movies are, or in our age, Fast Times at Richmond High, my wife never knew any of that stuff. So we would go out to the rainforest and this incredible young lady would point out the plants and the fruit and the type of butterflies and birds. And I couldn't believe it. A, this, they could crush me in regards to that exam in school. But B, I saw a different side of somebody that I never grew up with or saw before. And so it, you have to leave what you grew up with and start anew and keep an open mind and have a brand new book to fill. Because if you try to duplicate what I did in Philadelphia here, it would have ruined it. So I just wanted to be a guest in this country, master their language, dance in the rain, enjoy my life. And the run kept going. It just wasn't a one or two month or even a week thing. 
I wanted to make sure that this opportunity was not wasted. And especially for food, think of some of the fresh food they have here, the seafood and the produce and the farmer's markets. It's, it's incredible what they have here in your healthy lifestyle. So all in all, I knew this was a good decision for me and I decided to go for it. I want to unpack a couple of things that you've mentioned a couple of moments ago. One was that she's a girl of your dreams. And I love talking about relationships. And they have always said that opposites attract. Is that something that at first you believed was the case? And now you guys have kind of come together to bridge that gap a little bit? No, when you say opposites attract, it's our foundation was on interest and respect and always Matthew treating her like a lady, mm -hmm. always and being proud to be by her side. And even comfortable silence is usually the strongest bond between two people because they're just comfortable with each other's presence. And I made sure in the beginning to ask for clarification in regards to vocabulary, genre, expressions, or just tradition and culture. So I, I just didn't want to you know, trip over myself. Mm -hmm. so I was very careful and I was very, I was engaged in this environment and so this family that's meeting me it's almost like an 80s sitcom <laughs> i was showing up at their <laughs> house with the seven brothers and sisters but i wanted to make tamales with my suegra I, I wanted to make those during christmas and i wanted to sometimes if they didn't celebrate certain things that we did in the united states i brought our traditions down there like having an ice cream cake for your birthday you know <laughs> i wanted to do different things i taught them how to play golf you know other stuff so we can just find different ways to combine each, you know, our, our cultures. But in regards to my grace, I took it very slow. And as I say, when you say opposites attract, English, Spanish, sure. Small town in the mountains, Northeast Philadelphia, sure. She never saw snow, <laughs> you know? Okay. Right. Um, right. But that's the beautiful part. That's what you take off the shelf when you need it every now and again, just to explore it. So, you know, you're this, you're the city slicker from the oh, United yeah. States coming on down to Costa Rica, where you are a gringo dressed very formally business-like attire. I don't think that they're that used to it there. I'm just thinking about like what your world must be like. And then also you made a reference to back when you had hair. Now you're a young dude, so you're surely your beautiful bride is not the reason you don't have the hair any longer. No, I have a nice face. <laughs> That's what my dad <laughs> said. But no, I mean, I'm 52 years old. I feel fine. I mean, let's let's talk candidly here. You know, I take protein. I have supplements. I take creatine. I hit the gym six days a week. Been doing that since I was 17 as a tri letterman. So I mean, you know, I, I have structure and discipline because motivation comes and goes. Anybody mm -hmm. can have that. It's the guy that gets out of bed. It's 30 on a Wednesday when it's raining. Oh dear. That's the real ace. That's the real champ. And so I had, I always had that in me. I, by default, I'll be the last guy there. I'll be the first one to show up early. So at least I can wave out of the boss when he's pulling in. And will I stay late? Not necessarily every time, but if I'm on a phone call at 555, I'm not just watching the clock and running it out. If I get the call and I'm on with Matthew, I might be here till 620. But guess mm -hmm. what? Everyone left. I'm still ripping phone. Boss walks out, supervisor walks out, somebody walks out and they see Richard close it. And then I look at him and do the gun or the wink or something. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and because um, I realize now that not the tables are turned, but I'm in a certain position of leverage. I'm older now. I'm the boss. I don't want them afraid of me. I right. want them to shed some skin, crack some codes and get to different levels. And they're going to do it through merit by themselves, their own balancing. I'm just going to give them their direction. And if somebody says that me being on the phone with Matthew a little bit past my shift because the call came in at that time, that's doing something that's unethical or trying to cut corners. Absolutely not. That's the grind. That's the grit. That's the individual that is willing to go those extra rounds in the fight. Right. Or yeah. like in your restaurant, my man, I might it, like in the Sopranos when Tony used to show up late. Of course, the kitchen's open. I'll definitely make something for you. Me today, you tomorrow. Don't you ever turn away business or good vibes, or good energy, or good fortune. And so you do not close at 10. 
if your best client shows up at 9.55, that's the special night that they'll never forget. Forgetting oh, yeah. even the tip, it's what's going to come around again. And so um, keep that sort of open mind for the moment, because you could make somebody's day and make them look like a hero and a champion. You know, regarding your work and so on, running call centers, telemarketing, et cetera, is there a divide between services you're offering businesses, so your B2B work, along with whatever you might be doing internally as far as sales-related work? And if so, how do you divide that up? And, and what kind of companies do you work with? It's a very good question. I'll tell you five we don't do. Sports books, casinos, stocks, pharmacies, or sweepstakes, no matter what Hollywood says. And so half of my company does inbound customer support and back office support. The other half does outbound lead generation, appointment setting, even sales, hot lead transfer. Most of the time we log into the client's CRM system. Why? Because that's where their leads are. It's very easy for us to update it, disposition it, and put in the lead, even in the calendar. We also use the advantage of a predictive dialer when doing outbound prospecting. So instead mm -hmm. of manual dialing, click the dial, you have two to four lines going simultaneously on a five minute talk time. So as long as you're in ready status, you could be speaking the entire hour. And so uh, you need to work up to that endurance, but the productivity is amazing through the roof. You can disposition calls accordingly and the result and also set up callbacks so it can really set your calendar flawlessly. It's an yeah. amazing sidekick. But I tell you what, my friend, AI, I, I, do I see it as a threat? I don't know, buggy whip, steam engine, what's a threat? You know, sometimes things help you gather, help you become more productive. But Matthew, my man, I tell you what, let them bring it to the 10 yard line. But that remaining yeah. 10 yards to put that ball into the end zone, I will extend to you empathy, friendship, sincerity, and that interpersonal electromagnetic energy transfer between human beings. That's how we're going to close the deal. They can never show you empathy. That's the one thing these computers can never do. And so I always believe that someone will press zero or will be the specialist or will be the concierge for individuals for our companies. But the art of speech is beautiful, especially people that are bilingual which bears the mark of higher education in accents like Ricardo Montalban at Fantasy Island. Come on, it's super smooth. And <laughs> I just want to, and you would agree with this, it's, it's so delicate in their mid-20s and they've invested so much time learning English. Let's solidify their grammar. Let's give them the, the source to expand similes for vocabulary, for expression. And let's assist them in regards to their confidence so they can have the skill that most people do not have today. They'll have soft skills and they could right. use this outside of the office without their phone. And we're at this stage, my friend, of paying it forward. And I thankfully have something that will not be forgotten and just I'd appreciate it if people really work on these skills and do their dedicated practice like a chef does, then they'll become the best. They'll have a very, very comfortable career. A couple of questions regarding the people who work inside your call centers. Number one, a common obstacle that I've heard and experienced personally over the years with customer care lines that have been outsourced, yeah. usually to Philippines or India, is that their product knowledge is not that great. Their accents are very thick. And as a consumer myself, calling these lines, feeling like I'm really not getting what I need. And I know that this is a very common issue with a lot of people who sit on my side of the phone how do you overcome that? Or how do you train people to really understand a company's product, protocols, and services to be able to fully explain that to an articulate or at least native speaker? It depends how much time you want to invest training and onboarding somebody. But let's just yeah. think about the quick ramp up onboarding because I'm growing so fast. You can diffuse by adjusting tone thanking me for sharing it, understanding your position, allow me a moment to fix it. Even taking down, besides memorizing final exam, why don't I just take your questions? And I will repeat those questions back to you to make sure I got that. I'll make sure to get back in touch with you. But the first rule is don't say you're sorry because that's only gonna upset Matthew and me because you know Billy didn't do it. <laughs> so stop apologizing. That, that makes it kind of funky. And then secondly, I think what people need to do is they should, there, there's a governor 
People need to vent from time to time. I even allow profanity. Not at you, you get a warning second time, hang up. But if the cursing goes this way, because sometimes people curse, right. it's just allowing them to vent. And so I would then say in my Philly guilt way, Matthew, are you finished? Yeah, I'm finished, Richard. You sure you don't want to keep cursing? <laughs> and then you say, no. <laughs> and so then we can have a normal conversation. So my good friend, every 30 seconds to a minute, just have checkpoints to ensure you're readjusting the tone. How about asking tie down questions to say, Matthew, this sounds good, right? Matthew, makes sense, right? Because if it doesn't make sense, you're not able to move forward. I'm not moving forward. I'm going to give you a solid two minutes compared to a shaky six. I will continue, I will move from horizontal to vertical, and then I'll start asking open-ended questions. Matthew, what challenges are you having? Matthew, what did you experience before? Because I stopped doing the, the menu list. Why don't I just open-end, I write the notes, I repeat back to you. So you did say A, B, C. Is that correct? Yes. Don't hedge. Don't say great, perfect, okay, because sometimes... It's not okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if Matthew says one, two, three, Matthew, you said one, two, three. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. Matthew, you said ABC. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. It's a sensitive area. You got to sew it and land it. And then finally, how about this, my man? Military alphabet. I can't tell you how right. many times emails bounce back or instead of saying cash, C-A-S-H, you're saying cash A. People get confused. And then what about B's and D's? And how about this? A lot of people have served in the military. So instead of ending the call, you're anchoring. You could have an encore. Spend mm -hmm. a couple more minutes talking about service pride and ensuring that your amazing email does not bounce back. And so these are very good foundation soft skills that people can have. And my final bit of advice, if it's customer support or prospecting, there's something called a positive escalation. And that is when you ask to speak to a supervisor because Matthew's doing such a great job. Or if you're prospecting, just make sure you let Judy know before you get transferred to Matthew. She's great. So when I get transferred to you, before I say anything, I'm going to go, Matthew, you got to know Judy's the greatest. And you'll say, thank you. She's you know been with us for 10 years or she's my wife or something like that. And then I do it in writing when I do the meeting minutes and do the follow-up custom-made email or voicemail, depending. Do your due diligence. And then my friend, your pipeline is built. So when I do the Richard circle and happen to call 50 Taste of Grey back and ask how the company is doing today, Judy's gonna be like, is this Richard Blank? I go, of course it is. Judy, Matthew's waiting for your call and thank you so much for the compliment. I go, not a problem because you've received 999 other calls. No one's ever complimented you. <laughs> and so that's These are it. pretty advanced skill sets that you're talking about. How do you no, really train that? I mean, you know, customer care people that I get are are never that well trained. Now, prospectors are a different, different class, right? Okay, sure. There's hunters yeah. and fishermen. Sure, it goes both ways. Are you teaching them things like neuro-linguistic programming? How do you have the time to, while onboarding somebody or even in the training phase, get them to the place to where they understand your very well articulated space and place. It's like the gym. How many plates do you want to put on? And are you willing to learn different exercises? Or are you just going mm -hmm. to sit on the fly machine and camp out there? Come on, give me a break. Uh -huh. And I see people's <laughs> wasted potential. And then I also see people that come to me saying that they read something, heard something, or they, I got this one kid that writes 15 vocabulary words a day and it's all across the board. Mm -hmm. Like bewildered. I'm like, that's a good one. <laughs> you know, he's like parallel. Okay. Where'd you find that one? And so they're excited. They're collecting. They're growing. I can't hit the ball and drag Johnny. It's just not going to work that way. Can I show them my three backflips while biting an apple? I can do that too, but that doesn't do any good either. And so the best thing to do is to give them levels to hit or some sort of positive reinforcement on something, and, and, and I have the luxury of recorded phone calls. I, I, my industry is linguistic, and so they can hear themselves. They can taste their own food. And they'll know if it's good, and it's up to them. I just make the face, like, you know, you did too much salt, you burnt it. And um, but for me, I, I love rhetoric. I think a really good delivery hits. Most people are so concerned about a body and a conclusion of a call, but if you don't land an introduction, you have no spark, no fire, nothing. 
True. So stop thinking ahead. It really doesn't make sense. But I'm not giving you the cliche in the now, but you really have to look down because if not, you're going to break your leg in the woods. I mean, you can have <laughs> the distance, but you really need to zig and zag a little bit and realize where you're at. Because I tell you what, if I hear a dog barking in the background, but I'm not paying attention and it only barks once, I could have missed it. But if I caught it, I could be like, hey, Matthew, I love dogs. You're like, yeah, me too. I go, what's the name of your dog? His name is Champ. What is he? He's a Maltese. How old is your puppy? 14 years. Ah, oh, puppy. Ha <laughs> ha. And so, you know, once again, it's just, you wonder how people anchor. Stop selling for a second. And if you right. watch these business movies, it's the guys in the bar having the drink talking about life or, you know, the walk. It's not that carpet bomb selling or even in your industry, just cooking it up and shipping it out. No, it's the guy that does the perfect pizza toppings where it's beautiful looking on top. Or when they do cakes and stuff, it looks like a bunny rabbit, <laughs> you know, things like, I love when people can go above and beyond because it shows besides the money, they, they love what they do. And people appreciate that. They, they appreciate the, the cherry on top. And in my industry, and you said it, it's just having that sort of empathy and patience an ability to move it forward to the point of where you might resolve that call, you know, on a first time and yeah. get those good numbers. And so that's very advanced thinking. And, you know, I guess most people who are watching us right now don't, don't believe off the top of their head that people in call centers have that kind of advanced ability to be able to reason in a conversational way. You were also, you had mentioned, I'm thinking a whole bunch of different things right now. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about AI, and then I thought of when you said that, I'm thinking people don't even answer their phones anymore. If no. you don't recognize the call that's coming in, you don't pick right. up. Is that the same thing in the B2B world? It can be. It definitely was during COVID. So then what do you do? You make custom make emails or voicemails. Does that replace it? No, but you can add 20%. At least if you're hardcore prospecting, it will still mm -hmm. work for you. And maybe by doing that extra due diligence, when you do get the person on the phone, you can offset the lack of contact ratio to more of a quality call because you did some research. You might just even out the sales or even surpass it because of that. Before you were panning for gold. Now you're like, you know, doing some really nice sniper shots. And so okay. it just depends on where you want to do your time and, and how you want to invest in it. And so right. I, I've seen that, but now I tell you what, you get a thousand texts a day, you get a hundred emails, how many voicemails you get? And if you really yeah. do a good one, you're going to listen to it. That's and true. The chances are you might call me back because we've left some beautiful voicemails and we can get 20% back there. So 20 in the emails, 20 in the voicemails, but why is the voicemail important? It's Bruce Lee that's just doing karate by himself. Why? The thousand practices for the full time. So I'm going to practice leaving 100 amazing custom made, like Mad Libs, not the whole thing, but I got to change three or four things in it. Come on, it's from bicycle to ice cream and Matthew to Joey. I mean, think about it. And so um, at least I, I'm loose, I'm fresh. I'm still doing practice on the, on the range. I'm still hitting some balls. Mm -hmm. Why? So when I do finally get Matthew live, I'm not acting, I'm reacting and I'm ready. I'm warmed up. I can do 15 reps, you know, exactly. I'm doing <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm ready to go. I love that philosophy. I love that technique. What about the high turnover in your industry of the people who are seated mm -hmm. doing the work? that you're providing them with, because that's got to be difficult. What are you doing to handle that? Well, how do you feel after you spend an hour cooking something and someone hates it? <laughs> it's like, I spend an hour or two with soft skills training. I listen to your phone calls, yeah. Billy. Yeah. Come on, yeah. I motivated you. And all of a sudden you, you quit. And that's okay. You just can't take a personal why, because I know I did, but everybody loves peaches. Right. I'm sorry, not everybody might not like the three-piece Philly. What are you going to do? But with honorable intentions and good faith, I can live with myself and I know the percentages. But yeah. how about this, my friend? Let me give you some constructive arguments on this. There's My industry has a 300% attrition rate. So right. it's, it's like the trenches. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're one with machine guns. You blow that whistle and they're out there and they're not lasting. 
So you still have to invest in them because you never know, it could be a surprise. But there's two types. You have natural and forced attrition. Natural attrition, okay? Maybe because I compete against Amazon, they're here in Costa Rica. Matthew, there could be a better schedule for you because you go to school, okay? Mm -hmm. How about your girlfriend works there? <laughs> better than me. It might be, <laughs> it might be closer to your home. And finally, if you do have skills and you're marketable, you might be able to make more money there. You might have a supervisor executive position. I can live with that. But they will never in my call center get the walk of shame. I'm right. not going to make you cry on the floor. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. do those things. I'll call the balls and the strikes and I'll let you know through guilt that you're out of character and you're better than this because I have the proof. I got the metrics. But I, I, I'm not going to break you. I'll bend you. I want to see where you can go. But I'm not going to break you. And the people that start strong look in your eyes and tell you the world. But the ones that peace out on you don't give you two weeks notice and can't even look in my eyes, shake my hand and say, Richard, we had a good run. That's not me. I did the chivalrous thing. I was there at the ready to see you. Exactly. You just rolled on me. And now I got to call Matthew, right? It's a Wednesday. And I'm like, Matthew, um, Billy and Tommy didn't show up today. Well, okay, no surprises, but guess what? I got a good game plan. I got three guys that we just interviewed. They can start tomorrow and they're going to even be better. And so I can always have them sit next to the two guys that will shadow, onboard them quickly. You are not going to miss a beat. It sounds like you have a great strategy, but you are also acknowledging that there's a lot of stress and burnout in that industry. That's the price that you pay. Yeah, you yeah. Gym, your, your arms are going to burn from weight. How about you being in the kitchen? Sometimes your feet and back hurt. And what about that occasional oil? Got to be careful, <laughs> you know, be careful. And so you have to be on your toes. It's Here we are. You're the, you're the guy, the call center guy, the guy down in Costa Rica. And you brought up food 12 times. I'm the chef. I haven't brought it up at all. But now here's your chance. Tell me a little bit about Costa Rica and its food. And how you became used to the flavors down there. Their main dish is a breakfast. It's gallo pinto. It's the rice and beans. You know, but the eggs are fresh. But I love the seafood that's here. I think it's incredible. They do a little bit with some chilies, which is nice. But a lot of it is just with a lot of green. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, the, it, the food here is incredibly fresh. And the bananas that they do, they cook that a thousand ways to Sunday. The coffee. The coffee is so good, you have to drink it black. You don't want to dilute it with anything. I mean, the flavor is incredible. I like it strong, personally. What have you eaten today? What have you eaten? Um, first thing in the morning, I put down about four eggs. <laughs> That's number one. And I also was doing some granola. And then I take my protein powder for a little bit with two bananas, which is nice. For lunch, I put down some veggies and some chicken, you know, and a nice salad. Might just munch on some stuff this afternoon, just see like an apple or something. And then for dinner, I'll have something light. I don't know. We'll see what the, the wifey's making as a surprise. You can't skip your meals. I mean, if you're going to be working very hard as an entrepreneur or anybody, you need to just fill yourself. You need protein. You need mm -hmm. things to not burn you out or to make you sick. And I exactly. do like pizza and Pringles, but if I oh, really yeah. need to step up to the plate, I got to eat some chicken and some veggies. That's the only way I'm going to make my day. I and totally hear you. Water. I wish more people would understand that. I would love to eat McDonald's every day. Wouldn't you want to have ice cream? It'd be amazing and Funyuns and stuff. I mean, what are you going to do? Come on, I'm not 16 yeah. anymore. But in all reality, I also want to have a nice stomach. The worst thing to do is to have indigestion or gas or, or you're burping and stuff. Who needs that? It's almost like right. when you watch dinner parties and people cut their meat extra small so it doesn't fall out and drip and everything. <laughs> they eat so slow. Sometimes on a date, you don't eat at all. You just don't want to look like a slob. And so you sometimes right. just want to... You want to protect yourself because you got to think of the long game that day. You don't want to be out of commission. Yeah, so true. I'm seeing behind you, I'm seeing what looks like a jukebox on one side and a vending machine on the other side. Can you describe to everyone watching and who's listening what you've got in your background there? Oh, Matthew, thank you so much for bringing this up. This is a gorgeous 1961 Ricola Regis, and this is my private candy stash. I collect 
antique pinball machines and retro arcade machines. And so Beautiful. my oldest pinball is a 1970 Bally's Camelot and the newest, it's mid nineties. It's a Arnold Schwarzenegger, last action hero, daddy East. But I love gamification. Recess is the best class. When I have my agents downstairs playing air hockey or Pac-Man or the fighting games, it's a great chance to let off steam, recharge batteries, hang out with me. I've had people fall in love and get married because they were playing games together. And so get off the phone and stop smoking cigarettes. While you have a break, hang out, have fun. That's the sort of thing that I was thinking. But yeah, this is oh, this treasure. And you that know, a beautiful. lot of these arcades go out of business. And so what you do, you you call up your buddy with the truck, you drive three hours to Perez Zeladon, you check out Don Pedro's bodega, where you open it up like what, those storage wars and those antique hunter things? I'm doing it here. Uh -huh. right. I got cash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. Exactly. But you got to play it cool. You can't get too excited when you see it. It's like, oh, a 61 or Cola Regis. Like, how much? <laughs> so what, what kind of selection do you have on that? You're so funny. I know what you're thinking. I'm opening it up for Led Zeppelin, In Excess, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I know. These are okay. artists I've never heard from from the 1960s and 70s in Latin America. Now, everyone else has heard of them. I haven't. And so I keep them as a novelty. I'll order other ones from the States to put in there for my generation. And um, But I tell you what, out of the six machines I bought, I haven't gotten a single 45 that I knew. Not well, not even right? Mabamba. <laughs> Nothing. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah man. But they all love the ones that I saw. They said, yeah, my mom used to listen to this. I'm like, yeah, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. And uh, are those uh, your old original favorite candies in the vending machine over your left shoulder? Locally, yes. But when I go uh -huh. back to the United States, I'm the first person to grab a big bag of circus peanuts. Do you remember that right. candy? I do. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, that's my favorite. Can't get them here, but yeah, this is fun for me. I mean, it's, as I say, when people walk into my office, like any CEO's office, you're expecting cold metal chair, you know, bad lighting, getting yelled at. Not me. You're eating some candy, having some coffee. You're here to celebrate. Right. And or, I'm sure there's got to be a protein vending machine somewhere off camera. Oh, hell no. That's at home. Get your drumsticks here. here. It's only fun. <laughs> you can't have something serious and boring. No one wants that. That is very funny. But what about the unpredictable hours that you're working? You seem to be always on as a performer is, but I know that that can be the case. And here you are running. How many people, how many employees do you have? 150. Daily, please. They're full time working. agents with full benefits. Majority of them are working from home. That was the result of COVID. Which is it's great. Actually, that's a benefit, isn't it? That's a wonderful benefit. Financially, yes. Business yeah. wise, yes. But in regards to synergy and connecting with people and reducing that attrition, absolutely not. No, right. it ruined my, my carnival barking. It's gone. You that's dig the connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're not, you're not getting as much of that because people want to work from home. They want to be eating their bonbons and their hair and curlers, sitting at their own desk doing your work. How about this? They'll put up the metrics to justify their work to continue receiving that paycheck and being competitive with work from home virtual agents. But you tell me this, Matthew, you and I are sitting next to one another here, making phone calls. I'm high-fiving you. You're high-fiving me. My mainest man. Your production at a least increases by 20%. So you're mm -hmm. not getting the best out of someone. It's better to hit the gym than working out from home. It's just not the same. It's a print, not a painting anymore. Movie compared to live theater. Microwave a compared microwave. to Matthew's homemade dish. Big difference. No comparison. Cannot do. I didn't want to insult you, but I had to. No, make no, it's it. okay. You can try. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you do? Do you set quotas for the metrics that they you have to. that your people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, how does that get done? How do you figure out what is a good job and what's not? I mean, we don't do performance based. There can be incentives to it, but we do pay taxes on that as well. If you do just performance based, that rotation will be crazy. Plus, yeah. I'm going to tell you something else. If it's performance based only, you may not, or you may want to be more aware of the profile of the agent that you're getting there, 100% mercenary. They will mm -hmm. not stay with you long-term. They might be into other activities. 
or right. things to assist them making calls. So I, I don't know if you want that sort of individual in your environment. I've had too much experience with that. But most of these individuals are plug and play professionals. It's just like an actor, different script, different customer support or lead gen. There might be yeah. a little bit of a, of a thing here and there. But no, there's, there's average talk time. Okay. Wrap up time. If they're on the dialer, there shouldn't be missed dials or downtime there. Yeah. We have dispositions to see on average if they literally are having a contact ratio. Are they speaking with people? You know, not just saying wrong number, the guy's been dead for seven years. And so there are certain patterns that people have. You can see the racehorses running in pack, you know, and who might be ahead is the ace or the one behind that might be right bus, right seat. This individual belongs here. He just might not be that player in that position. So I started as left wing and ended up as goalie. I mean, it's just how it goes. Right. But right. Um, I, I want to make sure that two things, that I don't compromise their ethics, values, and morals, okay? And secondly, it's a strict Catholic country. I have to be exceptionally selective of the campaigns that come here. And I'm a guest here. I don't want to ruin my reputation to be some guy's fall guy in Chicago. No. <laughs> Was that something Not you had to overcome, the, the religious aspect of Costa Rica versus Philly? No, not at all. As I say mm -hmm. before, these are God-fearing home people that love their parents and family. And, you know, it's, it's like going back in time to the 50s and 60s, you know, with the Cleavers. And so I, I like seeing people that love their family and respect their family. And if going to church is part of their tradition or their mothers are very religious that keep a nice household. I, I think that is absolutely phenomenal. And so, right. um, especially during the holiday season when they have Noche Buena and they have Christmas and the other sort of celebrations for Semana Santa, um, if you are or not part of that religion or if you do or do not know it or celebrate it, just by observing it, it's exceptionally festive. It's very complete. Everyone's willing to share what they know. And as I just say, there's so many different activities that this really united culture shares. But we just had our Independence Day for Costa Rica. And so uh -huh. the whole country from young and old, boy and girl, they all celebrate together. And it's a beautiful way to bring these communities together. And everyone seems to know everybody. Hey, kisses and handshakes and smiles and kids running left right. and right, you know, and giggles and laughs. And I mean, how do you not have fun? Plus you can get some really good tasties there. Like um, they really have good candy apples and the sort of churros and stuff. So you can get some really fun fast food and junk food down here too. All those sinful things. How fluent are you now? I would say that I'm fluent. Just the only thing is my accent. But they can tell that you're someone else or from somewhere else. Like 50 miles away, almost like the blinking red light on a mountain. <laughs> yeah, so, <right. laughs> but what can I do? I can get their attention. My grammar is beautiful. My vocabulary is great. I'm expressive. But learning a second language is, is discipline and structure. Like it's, it's really a commitment, but it's also a gift. You can have it everywhere and anywhere. You don't need to load up, download, connect. You don't even need electricity and all the world's right. a stage. So you've given yourself a luxury. And so for me, I, I had to make a strong argument with my family to study this in college and make it a major compared to following in law and business and finance like my father, grandfather and brother did. And so it's a risk, but I knew it was going to make me marketable. Little did I know it prepared me for that momentum when I came to Costa Rica, where I was like on third base, you know, it was very easy for me to acclimate. And so it all seems to fall into place, my friend, that bottle that you've been saving for years, all of a sudden you get to use it. And there we go. Right, right, right. It seems like you're the type that when you look over your shoulder behind you, you can kind of connect the dots more easily now. I knew my intuition. I also am claustrophobic. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to have a mental box. That would have been terrible. Selling right. your soul, even for a nice family business, which is set up for you. That's fine. But you're always looking out the window and wondering, where's my hero's journey? Where's my dragon to slay so I can save a princess and have a real taste of life? And it, it was important for me to not live with certain regrets. And so maybe I might have been seen as eccentric, a dreamer or somebody where people just couldn't compare notes. But when I used to get reinforcement from Spanish teachers or educators or 
people in the Latino community that I felt very influential when I interned for Telemundo. I met Pedro Sefsek and Miguel Quitana. These were major players for Telemundo. And they said, go Richard, go. I was like, well, rock on then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know when, when you meet your heroes and they say, you got something, kid, I like it. Well, then that's a nice checkpoint for me because it's not mommy or daddy or Matthew or my best friends in Philly. This is somebody that, you know, where the market speaks. And they they looked at me and they said, the kid's got potential. Well, damn it, then I'm going another five rounds then. Let's right, see what Rocky right. can do. And so um, that gave me my vigor along the way. What kind of a social circle background do you have with the folks there? Do you have a bunch of bros and buddies? Or are they pretty much back here in the States? I have both. I have a Richard life back in the States and a Ricardo life here. <laughs> but and how do they differ on the face of it? Or do they? Oh, my friends in Philadelphia saw me grow up, skin and knee, you know, ask a girl to dance, <laughs> you know, in eighth grade and, um, and to compete in regards to athletics and our dreams. But I was exceptionally fortunate, you know, Real quick, I, I was supposed to graduate a private school, Germantown Academy. So my dad mm -hmm. and brother went. It's a nice school in Fort Washington. Well, unfortunately, in seventh grade, I didn't do very well. And it's almost like I had to gnaw my own arm off to get out of that place. So I had to fail out. And then I went to a public school, Abington, where you had 10 times the amount of kids. Everyone lived in your neighborhood. They all grew up together. And in that five-year span, I made some of the best friends of my life and not only that, but today I do a second language scholarship for a graduating senior. So I, I, I will do that. I paid forward and I was just put into their hall of fame next to Steven Schwartzman and Ashton Carter. <laughs> Rock on. And my name's on yeah, that really. wall. Why? Because uh -huh. I was the long shot. I was a Spanish major. I was the fun kid from the class in 91. That was like a C plus B minus student that without these recommendation letters from the principal, of my Spanish teacher, I would have never gotten into Arizona. You got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. How do you not say thank you, what, 30 years later? <laughs> you have to. And so I'm very gracious and, and, and loyal to those friends that I fed off of their confidence and energy and love and our ups and our downs and being united and laughing and crying together and falling in love with each other. I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful way to grow up with some of the most amazing people that are so successful today and have wonderful families. And when I go home, it's not a hero's welcome. I'm just a kid that went far, but I'm still the same Richie that they knew back in 1987. And, and the hugs and the love and the friendship is just, and people know that when, when they have those friends that always pick up the phone and just wish well and are not envious and just want the best for you. And then I have my friends here. <laughs> are the, um, the hugs and the love and the friendship and the food the things you miss most from Philly? Now that you're in Costa Rica? Well, here's the skins. You can't have that all day, every day. When I come home, it's like a novelty. So people do make the time. I do fill my calendar. But yeah. if I live there full time, we're not seeing each other every day. They got their kids, right. they got their businesses. And so there is no missing out. And it's not like what it used to be. I can pop in and out and create it. And we all can share in it and relive it. But it's not, it will never be the same, but it's more than enough water for my desert. I can, I can, I can wait years or amount of time before I come back again. And, and then you have your friends in Arizona that you go to college with. And that's, yeah. a, that was a very interesting years of my life and my fraternity at the university of Arizona from 91 to 96. Those are so much fun, right. fun, especially the first winter when I was watching KY do's radio and seeing if they were going to say Abington school number so they would cancel school. No, they didn't. Again. So they still got to go to school and slush. And I'm lying by the pool at the rec center, chilling in between classes. I'm like, this is the best. I'm never going back to cold weather again. You're chilling in 100 degree weather. That's great. You have no idea what that was like, especially mm -hmm. in October and November. And everyone yeah. was beautiful in Arizona. We all were tan and in shape. <laughs> you know, they all came from like the West Coast schools. And, um, it was fun and what an adventure. And so, you know, traveling around Arizona and seeing that beauty, that opened your eyes. And uh, wow, what an interesting experience, right? If you were to just step outside and want to go somewhere, I know you're living in a paradise of sorts right now, but if you were to step away from work for a little bit, 
Where would you travel to and what would you do? I probably want the complete opposite. So during winter time, I'd like to be up in the mountains somewhere. Mm -hmm. It had a nice little village and everything smelled good because of the wood burning in their fireplaces. And you walk into the store and it's nice and warm and smells like cinnamon. <laughs> you have something nice warm to drink. And people are sledding and ice skating. And everyone um, is bundled up nice and warm. I would love to relive that again. I, I, I like when I used to go, as I say, back in the East, like, to feel that winter. Would you escape to the Rockies or the Alps? That's an interesting question. I guess more of the Rockies. Uh huh. Yeah, because, um, you know, my pop lives up in Colorado. He lives in the Springs. I did spend a year and a half living up there, which was interesting. I bet it was, yeah. Are you a Costa Rica citizen now or dual citizenship? I do not have a dual citizenship, not yet. Uh -huh. So are, is that something you're looking to do? Got residency, I'm married and have a company here, but the dual citizenship, um, you know, unless you have kids or do some other things, you'll get it. And so, Are you going to make some babies? Uh, maybe, but, uh -huh. uh, you know, between me and you, if I were able to raise them during the 70s and possibly the 80s, I'd be more inclined but is I that because of the whole, the way the world is now and the, the social media and the post COVID and all that stuff that's gotten in the way of, of having the entire bundle? I almost see it as the machine rocking the child compared to the mother. Yeah. And I think you're going to be eliminating an enormous amount of nurture. Mm -hmm. by, and technology is fine, but you are missing out on moments, learning moments. Technology is fine only in certain parts of our lives, right? Not as a replacement for the important things. Well, look how you and I were raised, my man. Yeah. I mean, television was good on Saturdays for cartoons or things like that, but we would read the books or we'd just be outside climbing trees playing. Exactly. Exactly. Riding our bikes, just like be home by six for dinner. That was it. See ya. How about this? <laughs> Remember having to call someone's house and asking for somebody? <laughs> you know, you That's right. Parents. Can Richie come out and play? Was available. <laughs> I tell people they don't go to other people's houses and knock on doors. They don't call them anymore. See, that's what's so odd about what you do, for my mind, is because people don't call each other anymore. I grew up, I'm older than you, and we used to call each other all the time. Now you've got a text to ask for permission to call. It makes no sense to me either. And guess what? I'll call anyway. Uh-huh. And leave <laughs> your voice message. Yeah, of course. Because I no one's voice picking message. up their phone. Come on, Matthew. I know you're there. <laughs> Pick up. <laughs> oh, well, oh, the machines are a whole different, that's, that's another world away. But I'll say, people yo, Matthew, I got really good news for you, but I'm not going to tell you unless you call back. <laughs> and yeah, that's good. And you can't text me. My message for you, if I were to leave a message for you, would be, Richard, I got to tell you, you'll never believe what just happened. And then just hang up and you'll think like, oh my God, of course, you'll call me back. Of course I will. In fact, <laughs> my man, I probably would have picked up <laughs> when you called. Oh, you screen your calls. See, I don't have the ability to screen my calls. Listen, I pick up almost every call. And if it's a telemarketer, that's great. Let's see what they right. can do. <laughs> you know, most of the time I'm like, listen, Joey, I got to give you a couple tips. First, stop saying help because <laughs> that's annoying. It's assist God and lend a hand. And my name is Richard, not Robert. <laughs> We're not even listening. You're so you know, funny. So you're like, try to assist. you're like phone porn man. And I am food porn man. Should we combine it? <laughs> no. I am thinking there's got to be some sort of a nexus where the two could kind of like create something special. Well, a lot of people eat when they make phone calls or chew gum. And I always say yeah, that doesn't help you. So maybe right. we could have a competition where someone's munching on your food and trying to make a phone call and being understood at the same time. What do you think? <laughs> Blowing bubbles and, you know, the whole bit. Yeah. The... And you can't let it fall out of your mouth because everything that drops, you get, you lose points, right? Exactly. Exactly. This has been a lot of fun. I'm so glad that we had this chance to to connect a little bit because I just so enjoy you. Yeah, this was a good time. Is funny. there anything I didn't ask you, Richard, that, that our audience should know, that people should know either about you or about themselves? How about this, some, some parting thoughts. I always believe that an entrepreneur, just an individual, individual in general, should just not be hard on themselves. And there are certain weight that you're carrying. I don't know what it is. Just try to get rid of this weight. And if it means making yourself vulnerable, not for criticism, but just 
to be out there and so be it. And I mean, you only get a hundred years to do this. Right. And there are certain times in your life, if you don't have the blueprint or the class schedule or someone pushing you into it, you might need to go with your intuition, which is pushing you in a certain direction. And so look in your eyes in the mirror at the end of every day, know that you did things with honorable intent, make your bed in the morning as well, give yourself respect and make that circle. So maybe, Matthew, just maybe, when you put your head on the pillow, you can have comfortable thoughts, not a heavy heart before you go to bed. And if anything or nothing, that's just a nice way to reset, rebalance yourself and give yourself another day. And that would just be my advice for people out there that, that have unrealistic expectations or maybe have lost their sight for a little bit. It's, it's more of just calming down and enjoying what you're doing at the moment. That's my really great words, Richard. Yeah. I know you work mostly with businesses, but if there are any people who are listening and watching and enjoying you right now, and they would like to reach out, how would they do that? Buy a first class plane ticket and come on Ooh. down, Matthew. But you can shoot me an email, CEO at Costa Rica's call I have a very large Facebook fan page, 140,000. And it will give your audience a real grasp of the BPO industry. Now, as I mentioned, North of Panama, South of Nicaragua, Costa Rica is the only democratic society in Central America. So there's no standing army, 95% literacy rate. They put their money in education, neutral English accent, best infrastructure, Amazon, HP, Intel, they're here. Eco and medical tourism is here. A large expat retirement community yeah here and if your audience just if they call me up and they just want to run through a script or pick my brain as long as they say hey i listen to you on matthew's show definitely getting my consulting for free so that's your bonus today you just mentioned this 50 days <laughs> ago or that matthew sent you i'd be more than happy to uh run some ideas and see where we you go. You can all be bonus babies. Just contact Richard. Now, Richard, of course, I know what BPO is, but a lot of the people watching us do not tell everyone what BPO is and how it relates to what you're doing. Of course, business process outsourcing. It's really right. just an extension of your company through your computer system, our computer system. It's really just a matter of offsetting what's not being done in your office, comparing apples to what's in your office, or just using our infrastructure and knowledge to increase what you're already doing. It's a means to an end. There's a nice system to it. It's not as glamorous as Hollywood makes it out to be, but mm -hmm. I tell you what, if somebody has the soft skills to get on a phone call and sight unseen, carry a conversation, listen, tie down, repeat, wrap it up in a bow, you'll make a million dollars. You'll have the skills. And uh, that's fantastic. You know, you were just mentioning a moment ago about the uh, the political state down there, which sounds like it's doing pretty well. When you take a look at what's happening back here in the States, does that make you crazy? My mama says you can't talk politics or religion with people, but how about, I, how about this from an outsider, an exceptionally proud American, North American that I believe represents our company in the best light. Right. The worst thing you ever want to see is two people in your crew fighting because it's your crew. You shouldn't have your crew arguing or fighting. There are certain ways to discuss. So your neighbors I, are our crew when you boil it all down. I am boiling it all down. I'm not saying that I've lost friends because of politics. I'm very reserved mm -hmm. besides sharing my thoughts in public with people. But I've, I know individuals that won't speak to other people because of their politics. And right. I, I guess that's just the outcome of things when people are so passionate for something or have to choose a side. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know what it is? You know what it really is to me. It's when they do those scientific experiments. Well, they'll put 10 people in a room, but turn the lights out. And have them sit there and talk to each other for half mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? Turn them lights on. And you're like, wait a second, Matthew, I totally did not think that's what you're going to look like. Well, that's great. Why don't we do that then? With swords turning on the light and showing your political party, why don't you spend a half an hour in the dark, yeah. you know, speaking? And so when you see them, you would have prejudged, you would have already made a position. You might have eliminated any sort of opportunities or benefits. 
And what a waste of life. There are certain foods out there that you would have never known to try. And then they become your favorite. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just see that as sad. And uh, but I tell you what, at the end of the day, if somebody asks me a question in Costa Rica, I'm an extremely proud citizen of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And whomever wins as president, I may or may not have favored the majority of their positions, but I, I will respect that individual in office as well. That's my team. I'm loyal yeah. to my team. And right, if I meet right. somebody here that has served in the military, they're the first people I would love to hire. And they are my leaders. They're my heroes. And I'd love to ask them ways in which we can get better because of their experience. And so, ah, my good friend, you're being set up. It's people that will stand behind you, push you and you fall over, you know, when they do that little thing behind your knees. And it's, I don't like setups. I don't like traps. I don't like when people do things to deliberately provoke. It's very sad and it's very ugly. Yeah. And the worst thing is to say something that you regret or you can't take back or you're embarrassed and you, you, you have your pride and you really have to weigh how much this person means to you and what you're willing to sacrifice or what you're willing to put up with to be with this individual. And I, I think politics should never be a deal breaker. Right. That should never be a deal breaker. Okay, well, back in our generation, it wasn't. Now it is, though. If someone is physically assaulting you, you might want to make a distance. If a person is affecting you mentally to a certain point where it's badgering or just it's, it's too intense, you might need a timeout in some space. Mm -hmm. But it's, if it's because of taxes or because of individual personal issues, well, that's fine. But it's not, in my mind, I don't think it was very fair that one side gets to choose chocolate ice cream while the other one does vanilla. That's not fair. It's ice cream. So I'd say mm -hmm. if I agree with five out of seven, I don't need to choose a full side when each side has things I love. And then would you say other things that you hate? No, but I, I think there's got to be at least the top 10 that we all agree with. So why can't we just combine that together and have that as the VIP section, you know, with that everybody? Fair enough. You know, it's not fair to, to, to slice off the room in half. It's not fair. It's not fun. And um, but then again, judge people's characters during chaos or what they say behind backs or what they're willing to say. And maybe if you know them for a long period of time, Matthew, you give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're just having a, maybe they just stubbed their toe that morning and they're a hammer looking for nails. You know, they're in a <laughs> You're good, my friend. Yeah. And I want to say aloha to you, my new friend, Richard yeah. Blank, all the way aloha. from Costa Rica. Hope you had a good time today. I had a great time today. I, uh, you do a fun podcast. You bring the best out of people. And, uh, you know, you are definitely the coolest cat out there in Hawaii. Besides Don Ho, is he still around by any chance? Still I, playing think, his, uh, he, I think he he took a leave of absence uh, a few years back. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, um, I think so. But you know what? He's always there. He's got to be a Hall of Famer in Hawaii. Oh, you bet. I mean, leading the list, right? <laughs> That's my man. Yeah, retired <laughs> his number. I love it. Have you ever been? I have. I was in Waikiki back, I think, in like 1986. My pop took me out there. And it's um, what a beautiful place. And I have a very, very good friend of mine that lives out there as well. But Richard Blank, once again, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me all the way from Costa Rica here on 50 Tastes of Grey. Thanks again, buddy. Vida. That was fun. Matthew, you do a great interview. Is that coffee? So good. Oh, <laughs> that's a good that was great fun. My boy, Matthew's my boy. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. What's your ethnic background? Oh, uh, Romanian and Russian. Romanian, Russian, uh, Russian, Eastern European here. Eastern European, like Polish, German, Romania, Russia. Couldn't quite tell. So it's always difficult to tell, but it's fun to ask. And they all came to New York at the turn of the 20th. They made their money in the garment industry. That's in right. Or as we call it, schmata industry. Right. And right. um, that was interesting, you know, the, my family from Brooklyn and Westchester, uh -huh. and then in Philadelphia, you know, Rydal Abington. And that's where my parents met up in Sugarbush, Vermont, and then the rest was history. Wow. Uh, and I'm a New York boy to start with originally. 
And, really? Uh, I know what it's part in, of New York? I grew up in Syosset on Long Island. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then it's in the fine print for everyone born in New York that you have to get out. Most people have to get out to Florida. I just went west. So you know what the word mashugana means? Yes. So you're speaking to one right now. When I come home, it's like eating chocolate on Halloween. I'll be on going the same place like six times and driving my neighbor a hundred times and I get out of my system and I, I don't stay downtown. I'll stay in the suburbs when I go back to Philly. I'm not going downtown. I want to get a bed and breakfast or an Airbnb right in my neighborhood. Old school. <laughs> you know. That's really great. Really fun meeting you. I hope that you'll want to stay in touch. And oh, um, Definitely. I, I hope I was entertaining and had something really good to say. You sure did. You sure did. A lot of fun. Thanks so much. Thanks, buddy. You take care. Take care. Aloha. Bye now.